Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. We'll try to make tonight's meeting very short. Um, we'll do three things tonight. Number one, we'll take a few minutes to really praise and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, I'll just share a few thoughts about Christmas. Just certain things that will be good for us as Christians to note. And then we'll speak over our lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. Psalms 107. Just hold your Bible. Psalms 107. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercies endure it forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east from the west, from the north, from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way and found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Being bound in affliction and iron. Because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord. Take note of every time they cried. In their trouble and he saved them out of their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death. And broke their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men. For he had broken the gates of bronze. And cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Their soul had abhorred all manner of food, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word, and he led them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works, to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing they that go down in the sea in ships that do business in great waters these see the works of the lord and his wonders in the deep for he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof they mount up to the heavens they go down again into the depths their soul is melted because of trouble they reel through and fro and stagger like a drunken man and they are the white their wit end and they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses he maketh the storm to calm, so that the waves thereof are still then they were glad because they were quiet and he bringeth them into their desired heaven oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders he turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell therein he turned the wilderness into a pool of water and the dry ground into water springs and there he maketh the hungry to dwell that he may prepare a city for habitation and sow the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase 
he blessed them also so that they are multiplied greatly and permitted not their cattle to decrease again they were diminished and brought low through oppression affliction and sorrow he poured contempt upon princes and caused them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way he set it he yet he set the poor on high from affliction and make it their families like a flock the last verse the righteous shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop her mouth hallelujah how many of you are living witnesses that god has been faithful hallelujah in the next 10 minutes we are going to praise god i want you to worship god in an undignified manner some of us when it comes to worshiping god you this this ridiculous organization keep it out of your life i don't know how you are going to worship god but i know that i have a testimony god has been faithful the psalmist said if the lord has not been on our side now may israel say if the lord had not been on our side psalm 3 said how many are they that are risen against me he said but thou O lord art a shield for me you are my glory and the lifter up of my head micah said rejoice not over me my enemy for though i fall yet i shall rise he says there hope for a tree though it be cut down at the scent of water i like you to lift up your voice and say lord i don't need another person to tell me you are faithful where is that god that can keep a man from january where is that maker that can keep a man through february march april may walking on the same road that killed another person flying in the same airplane that can kill another person the bible says he make it hard that is barren to rejoice with children lord i call you faithful men may call you all kinds of names but this is my testimony from january february i thought i will not make it through the storm through the sickness through bomb blast through crisis through the wickedness of men you have been our ebenezer lift up your voice and let a song of worship Lord, you are faithful. 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 Lord, I call you faithful. Give him a song out of the depth of your heart of gratitude. Make melodies in the spirit. Say, Lord, you are faithful for the things you have done. Miracles, unprecedented miracles of breakthrough, of prosperity. Let me tell you, there is nothing you will do for God this night that is too much. Your kneeling down is not too much. Your lying down is not too much. The tears from your eyes is not too much as of an expression. This year you got born again. This year you got filled with the Holy Ghost. God took you from nothing and made you a voice. For I remember when I was a shepherd by the wayside. David remembered the days when he was nothing. Deserted in the house of Jesse. But God who can pick an ordinary man. Lord, I remember those days when no one will hear my voice. I thank you because you have given me a voice and a mouthpiece that the nations can hear. You got filled with the Holy Ghost. You were delivered, healed. Thank you for the miracles in this house. SS changing to AA. Creative miracles. All manner of miracles. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm not ungrateful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No matter what you have to complain about, realize it's even because you are alive. For the dead cannot praise the Lord. For the dead cannot praise the Lord. They that have gone down to the depths of the pit cannot praise their maker. But the Bible says, I will praise him in the land of the living. He said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let my worship rise, O God, like the evening 
faithful. I call you faithful. Thank you. Go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the transforming power of your word. Thank you, Jesus. Many of you, God, took you out of that class to do two, two. Out of two, two. Many of you graduated. Some of you served. Some of you got jobs. Marriages. Miraculous manifestations of the power of the Spirit. Deliverance from the hands of the enemy. God did not allow your enemies to rejoice over you. They that said, Where is their God? God put them to shame. Those who said nothing good can come out of your family. They watch your family dedicate houses. They watch your family celebrate cars. They watch ordinary people rise in your family. Because there is a God. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The God of Abraham. The Bible says the keeper of Israel. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. For disappointing the counsel of the wicked. So oh, I give you praise. 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 I will not forget, Lord. Your benefits. How can I? of God. You know it's not your prayer life that brought you this far. You know it's not your degree of obedience. This has nothing to do with you. You got miracles you did not pray for. You got breakthroughs you did not fast for. It's a count your blessings. Lord, we count our blessings tonight. Go ahead and begin to list as many things you know God has done. Say, Lord, I did not forget. You saved me from accident in February. Now we are in December. I know I've been busy, but I will not forget, oh God. Go ahead and pray. Some of you were admitted in the hospital. You saw others die. You saw them taking their dead bodies out. Some of you didn't know where your school teams would come from. But the God of all things. Some of you had carryovers that were waved supernaturally. You cannot explain it. For your mercies. Come on, we're giving him thanks. People died in plane crashes. Many churches were big, were in active worship when they were bombed. It would have been us. It would have been during one of the miracle services. If the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say it. Now may the house of Koinonia say, Lord, you have been faithful. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, to declare his praises in the morning.
Many of you have become leaders. See what the world has done in your life. See what the world has done in your life. You used to laugh at Christians before, but see what you have become by the power, the influence of the Holy Ghost. See how much the Word of God has gained ground in your life. He has given you a voice. He has given you a voice. He has made you a sign and a wonder. Who would have known that you will be healing the sick? Who would have known that you will be a prayer warrior? Who would have known that you will have the capacity to pray? Now you are a leader over many for your faithfulness for your faithfulness for your faithfulness lord we give thanks lord we give thanks hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you a few things that god has done in the house of koinonia this year and then we will praise him and thank him hallelujah we have experienced the grace of god in unusual ways listen if you don't learn to see what god is doing you will rob yourself the principle of thanksgiving is the way to multiply anything god is doing in your life many of us are not grateful when some of you are watching others rolling on the floor and worshiping and you are wondering why because they stayed in the hospital for one month with someone's leg hanging and they know God is faithful. Some of you are too innocent. You don't have a testimony. You've not been through anything. Even when you disobeyed God, people covered it for you. So you, you, can, you think it's because of your righteousness. But there are some people here that know that Lord, when people are bragging and saying my faith works, I know it's your mercy. Because this year prayer warriors died general overseers died billionaires died millionaires died little children died you are faithful this year as a ministry it's been one of our busy uh, the busiest years we've traveled by road on the air but the faithfulness of God I remember when I was going to Delta State when the plane crash was going to happen hallelujah we were moving in the air for over 30 minutes when we got to Lagos because we couldn't land and later the pilot spoke and said there's a bit of challenge we may have to go to the neighboring countries and, and land everybody was calling the name of everything there that would have been an accident ah yes all of you will cry for two weeks and it will continue but his faithfulness listen see there is a way you can experience God's mercy in your life it will cause you to love God as a matter of life and death because you have come to find out life sticks strings will say that he's your oxygen literally i've seen the faithfulness of god we have traveled in the night we have passed roads that they said arm robbers just robbed many of you saw armed robbers this year they raped other people and left you you would have been pregnant for children you cannot account for hallelujah all of the disasters right in this area many of you it was when you left sabo that certain bomb blasts and certain things happened many of you armed robbers came and passed your house and robbed your neighbor you were even sleeping it's when you woke up in the morning you found out that one of your neighbors had died it's faithfulness as a ministry we have never lacked a place to worship is the faithfulness of god god has been faithful there is no miracle service that we've not had the lord confirm his word i tell you if if you write a list of the miracles that have happened in koinonia you would think we lied about it awesome fearful manifestations of the hand of god in our midst all kinds of heterogeneous miracles blood groups 
creative miracles you just name it we've seen families transform supernatural miracles hallelujah we were in lagos this year for a program immediately after the program a woman walked up to me walked up to me and gave us a plot of land in Lekki in lagos how do you explain that we have experienced the favor of god let me tell you something this ministry is not run by strength otherwise would have been dead it's run by wisdom the superior wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes rule we have seen the hand of god when you look at what god is doing and you weigh us the equation is not balanced there is an there is there is an unfair factor called god in that equation there's no time that you have come that you lacked a seat to sit down and say sorry oh, we could not pay for seat or we could not pay for venue god has been faithful we've never had to manipulate you to bring out offering and say please help us we are in trouble the faithfulness of god you have never come here to see us carry the word and preach lies and deceit to you we don't say this to brag but you must appreciate the quality of the word that you have received in this place one man traveled somewhere for a conference that was well announced with guests coming around the world when he came back he came and met me he said look continue this that you are doing they announced spent millions on the flyers and they were just jumping around and playing child's play hallelujah oppressed people were coming going back oppressed it was just a jamboree but you many of you have invited people and you are you were so confident they won't be disappointed what if the people you brought were disappointed some of you brought controversial people who said i beg jare later you saw them sweeping the ground and saying jesus you are lord you say this is what i've prayed for the hand of god every time you come for koinonia you expect to hear the word imagine if we were not praying and serious with what god is doing that you just come and we come on stage and say well uh, we don't have much to share but i hope you know we are human beings too imagine if you came here and you saw all of us just saying we had a bad day let's all cry together many of you come and imagine what it will happen what it, what will happen to your faith but every time you come the spirit of faith enters you there is always a word that sets you above so you hear all kinds of junks there when you enter here you know that there is potent faith that is alive here praise god many of you have seen the power of god we have experienced the glory of god praise the lord we have seen the transforming power of god through our teachings and our messages i was sitting quietly when cbn africa called and they said they wanted to come and do a documentary on eni i don't know them from jack there are people passing their cards i'm a prophet please can you invite me i promise you you will not be disappointed but the hand of the lord his grace and his glory a lot of people called some days ago and said ah you're on ait and 700 club i refuse to look at it because i said these things can be deceitful i said lord i give you praise but i refuse to be misled by these things the hand of god we have seen all that many of you know that i'm not telling a lie you know how you have watched your pastor suffer as if it's not god that sent them praise the lord you have experienced the hand of god the grace of god many of you came here with all kinds of evil spirits you got from wherever you packed them and came here and god cleaned you up and today you cannot even believe as a family of faith we owe god thanks because he would have done without us and he will still be god let me tell you don't you ever think god does not have people he can raise stones I'm always always with this mindset that it is within God's power to do without me are you listening to me it is within God's power 
if i die today you only cry and ask questions and say but we know this guy was a man of faith what happened regardless of what you say it has finished after two weeks you cry and then <laughs> everything continues but it's by grace you have never seen any of us you came for koinonia and you saw the ministers and we came and we said sorry oh um we just came out of the surgery ward strong and agile there are times we finish koinonia in the night and we are going for vigils there are times we are sleeping and we are praying for you hallelujah we are praying for you so with all your disobedience you are still receiving breakthroughs you cannot account for and one day god called you and said mr man you better brace up because it's not you different departments working we've had all kinds of things we have lived as if satan does not exist we've had criticisms we've had a lot of things but god has granted us wisdom and maturity and focus imagine if we started going on newspaper to say look let's explain ourselves this power is not juju power oh we've had people say everything you can imagine every kind of thing some of you are part of the, <laughs> part of the people who said it before you later repented but all glory to him you see let me tell you something about god when you know god you you will be like a madman there is a degree of confidence that is out of this world and tonight we are going to say lord as a family of faith i say you are not thanking him for you now you have prayed if you don't have anything say lord thank you for what you have done for the ministers thank you for what you have done for every department the protocol department see listen you don't know the amount of work that goes in every week many of you just come in and there are ushers well dressed you don't know they are trained you don't know their belt you don't know the amount of prayers and fasting that goes in for you to come and get the presence of god if you think you can get it in the air go and get it praise god do you know the amount of hours it takes to prepare a sermon just one quality sermon born from the spirit not downloaded from the internet born from the spirit the ability to stay and discern and ask oh god what are you saying not what do we do we don't prepare messages from january to december here and say this is what we must say we are working real time with the holy spirit there are times we have come here and we ended up praying correct because of the direction of the spirit we thank god for the blessings the quality of ministers that you have here imagine if all the ladies in this place will not be safe because because we are anointed sisters imagine if you cannot come and worship god in peace and go because while we are Cain, abel i always use abel is worshiping and i just spot that sister and send her a prophetic note see me after are you not happy listen listen don't take it for granted because many of you have been victims in your churches and in your ministry there are many ladies today that cannot quietly go to a ministry and worship god in peace and leave there is always trouble or to be able to look and say Janfa, come and stand and we steal out money from your pocket whether you criticize nobody will come and put a god on our head have you not finished your story there who is chopping it is it not us and we are just smiling and saying god is good by the grace of god almighty we account for every ounce of finances in this place none of the ministers has direct access to the finance thank god that you have an environment of discipline where you can come and hear god's word not that you come here and just see us doing jamboree and just playing gimmicks and wasting your time and talking jargons hallelujah don't take it for granted hallelujah in five minutes i don't know how you're going to thank god say lord i thank you for every avenue to communicate the gospel of christ for our facebook our youtube channel on twitter the ministers our miracle services go ahead and pray say lord you are faithful thank god for eni thank god for koinonia 
many of you have taken these teachings to your families they have transformed your churches your meetings we dare to say with all humility that we have made an impact upon the people in this land as a ministry whether by teaching by the miraculous hand of God to the glory of God lift your voice and say Lord I thank you Lord we give you praise we do not boast we are humbled that you can use us we are humbled oh God that you can anoint us thank you for the discipline in this house thank you for the love thank you for the vision thank God for every department the worship team the hours that go into rehearsals and building the protocol department the media the ushers they are always cleaning the seats making the place comfortable for you lift your voice and say Lord we thank you Lord we thank you for financial blessings we thank you for wisdom we thank you for leadership acumen the ability to manage people the ability to manage resources Lord we return thanks as a family of faith we return thanks we return thanks we return thanks we've not had any bomb blast we've not had any act of terrorism we give you thanks oh God we give you thanks we have no ability in ourselves to protect ourselves but the God of all flesh has been faithful hallelujah hallelujah please lift your hands everyone bless me my god and my king i thank you for confirming your word in our midst that every time you bring your sons and daughters your word is not scarce in this place lord on behalf of the leadership of this great great family of faith we want to say thank you we are not ungrateful we will never claim to have accomplished anything by our strength for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail lord we thank you for our precious people everyone that you have trusted and committed by grace we thank you for the transforming power in their lives and their families in their jobs their businesses lord i thank you for the ministers Thank you for the heads of department, the escorts in every department, the workers, the faithful, priceless workers we have in this place. Motivated by revelation, I thank you for everyone. Lord, you have protected us on the road, in the air. You have protected all our members, biking every week. You have preserved them. We've not had to bury anybody on the bike. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for financial supplies, oh God. We have enjoyed abundance beyond our level of obedience. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for vision. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for grace. Thank you for the quality of word and revelation that you have brought forth in our midst. Thank you for the manifestation of the fivefold ministry in this place. Thank you because the church is built and equipped. Thank you because this is a place of genuine hunger and thirst for your kingdom. Lord, we give you praise. This is December the 21st. You have helped us. Lord, we return thanks. As a family of faith, we return thanks. In the presence of Satan and the holy angels and everyone as witnesses, we return thanks. Because the desires of our enemies have not prevailed this year. You have caused us to prosper. You have blessed us. You have increased us. On all sides, oh God, you have blessed us. You've granted us the grace to grow and have a balanced spiritual growth. We thank you. We give you all the praise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down quickly. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited? I am. Praise God. Now, um, 
Tuesday is Christmas, hallelujah. And we're excited. We celebrate Christmas. Praise God. Let me say one more time. We celebrate Christmas. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Hallelujah. But I just want to give us three reasons. I'm speaking very briefly on the significance of Christmas. I got to discover that many believers, even tongue-talking Christians, the only thing they know is what happened on Christmas. They don't know the significance. You ask them what happened on Christmas. They say a virgin gave birth to a baby called Jesus, the Savior of the world, period and full stop. How does that relate to us? Praise God. So I want to give us three reasons so that in the euphoria of the celebration, we can draw back and contemplate on these thoughts very quickly three reasons why every believer should number one celebrate christmas but much more celebrate christmas with revelation what is the significance of christmas if they call you in your fellowship at home or anywhere and they say you have attended koinonia we hear god is doing great things please give us a brief exhortation on christmas you're not going to stand and say well uh, there were shepherds there were angels mary gave birth jesus didn't die that's all that cannot be all hallelujah the significance of christmas number one or before i i begin i want you to write that christmas is all about jesus all not some all about jesus when you substitute jesus with any other thing father christmas um whatever it is those things are wonderful but christmas is all about jesus i love um publicities that says jesus is the reason for the season i believe that with all my heart because right now in the western world they are trying to remove the concept of jesus out of christmas i hope you know that so they just say season's greeting Please don't send any card with season's greeting. Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. They are not the same. You can't say season's greeting. Season's greeting for who? There are many seasons. But there is a season called Christmas. There are many things that are celebrated. The day Bin Laden died. The day polio came to the world. The day everything happened. So we have to celebrate jesus christ is not a founder of a movement he's the giver of life hallelujah so jesus is the reason for the season significance of christmas number one every time we approach the christmas season every true believer should bear the following in mind number one christmas should remind us of jesus as the light of the world that's the first revelation we should know jesus as the light of the world jesus as the light of the world praise god he came to model a path for us he came to give us a picture of what the believers walk in the earth should be he came to be the light the bible says in him was life john 1 and that life was the light of men hallelujah matthew chapter 4 says verse 16 it says the people who were once in darkness have now seen a great light light stands for direction light stands for illumination light stands for knowledge so jesus came first to be a portrait of the intention of the father the portrait of how a believer is supposed to walk in the kingdom that's why when he was born he didn't just die he lived for 33 years modeling a life the bible says that we should follow in his steps hallelujah so number one significance of christmas is that it should remind us of jesus as the light of the world the light of the world means that he came to model a pathway the bible says in thy light we see light so he came he came to create a pattern for the believer 
because they were walking in darkness and he brought light he brought the knowledge of the father the knowledge of the kingdom life to the believer the knowledge the characteristic feature of the kingdom he came to give us a reorientation about the kingdom life hallelujah and in response to this revelation we are supposed to respond as believers by different activities that will bring the lost to Jesus Christ the revelation as Jesus as light reveals him also as the light that brings men out of darkness the Bible says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son the kingdom of light hallelujah so as a Christian you respond to this revelation by your evangelical outreaches you try to find certain things you can do that will bring people into the knowledge of the truth that way you are responding correctly to the merriment of christmas so when we have carols for instance there used to be what a few denominations still practice it what they call it nine lessons or carol of nine lessons and people come very wonderful programs that bless people remind people of of certain things songs that remind us of the light we used to sing a song there is a candle in every soul some brightly burning you don't know the song you see hallelujah that time some of you were still in darkness <laughs> Jesus as the light of the world he came to show us the way and the Bible says ye say I am the light say it I am the light so you celebrate the Christmas first with the revelation that Jesus came as the light and then in response that you have now become the light so it's an opportunity to share Jesus Christ. It's an opportunity to give people access to quality Christian materials. You can bless people with books that can enlighten them. You are responding to the revelation of Jesus as light. Say amen. It's a time to support mission agencies. Agencies that are there preaching the gospel, ensuring that lives are changed. There are many mission agencies genuine mission agencies who don't eat the money that are given for missions capro you have a, a number of, of of very quality evangelical ministries and mission agencies it's the time to say oh i'm sowing a seed of five thousand to support the missionaries you are partnering with that revelation of jesus as the light of the world hallelujah you really see that many people do not celebrate Christmas in a quality way from a kingdom's perspective. Once it's December, what people are trying to think is, how much do you have? Let's gather and buy this cow. I have 50k, you call this guy said 20, you call 70, say let's bring it together. There's one small cow we can get in Giwa. And now that's, that's what we are thinking about. That's what is brewing in our mind. Are you using local rice or Uncle Ben's? Now, but this is the revelation that the Bible gives us thank God for all of those things but we must first have a revelation that is not a celebration of just a ceremony it's a celebration of a man and an assignment an agenda a revelation and number one is Jesus as the light of the world so your Christmas is not complete if somebody does not get born again through you your Christmas is not complete if someone is not filled with the Holy Ghost through you your Christmas is not complete. Some of you have friends around. Why don't you have a, a little Bible study group just for two days? Make Zobo and make cake or something. Let the people come or gather the children in your community. Do something that presents you as the light. Hallelujah. Number two. Christmas is a time where we remember Jesus as an expression of God's love to mankind. Jesus as an expression, the epitome, the revelation of God's love for mankind. John 3.16 For God so loved mankind. 
so loved the world and he proved his depth of love by giving his only son Jesus and he said whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have eternal life the gospel is called good news not bad news say good news so every time the gospel is properly presented it should let people see the love of God yes God is a just God yes God is a he's fearful in his holiness but I want you to know that God is love say after me God is love the message of God's love must be taken to the nations when you are building believers when we are teaching you and building you we cannot keep telling you God is love forever you must know other dimensions of God but when you are on the, an evangelical platform the first revelation a sinner needs to know is that God is love that no matter what they have done God does not condemn them he can receive them hallelujah so we must remember jesus as an expression of the love of the father his birth made it possible for him to die if he was not born he will never die is that correct so his birth as we celebrate his birth we remember also that he came on an assignment to die and he did not give up he was a substitute he substituted us in death that we will now live for him in life this is the gospel hallelujah the bible says while we did not even acknowledge him he died for us let's look at one scripture very quickly first john 4 first john 4 first john 4 Are you there verse 9 in this was manifested the love of god towards us that means this is what was done to prove that god loved us that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him verse 10 hearing is love listen not that we love god but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins and as a result 11 if God so loved us we ought also to what love one another praise God so the revelation of Christ as an expression of the love of the father and so Christmas is a time when we respond to this revelation by acts of love this is where you give gifts your hampers and everything you visit families you visit friends christmas is not a time when you just sit down and just laugh alone no you are supposed to express it in that you are revealing are you listening to me you are revealing the love of the father the bible says just like christ loved us you visit people who do not deserve your visit certain enemies that you have been nursing from january is the time you go to their house and say oh merry christmas say me I will, I will never buy christmas card buy it write their names hallelujah many of you only have the list of people who have done good for you you have it at the back of your book where the holy spirit speaks to you at the last page you reserved it for all those who have offended you christmas is a time when you x those lists out and say i have love for all men regardless of what they have done as an expression of what christ has done hallelujah when your parents tell you to label greeting cards and your father said don't that man are you bad let me not see you don't write anything the stupid man you say daddy but there is a revelation of jesus i want us to see in this period jesus as an expression of the father's love hallelujah number three it should remind us this is very important in the euphoria of celebration and taking capel eva pure heaven and for some of you who take all manner and brands of wine and say it's just five percent alcohol we believe in the full gospel and the full counsel of god if you have been taking beer repent say i only take during christmas repent repent take it 
very seriously because some of you your loved ones drink is okay god is working on them but you who have seen the light come out of that darkness don't say they forced us we always do insist on the counsel of god don't say i'll drink but i won't be drunk but by now you should know that god is seriously building an army don't make yourself vulnerable to satan hallelujah ladies during christmas that's when the problem of many ladies starts they explore things you shouldn't explore in the name of friends in the name of parties and of course there are beautiful christian parties and wonderful get together how do you know a christian party the values of the kingdom are kept no matter the height of the euphoria jesus is still lord when jesus becomes lord from the beginning of the party and becomes something else that's satan i won't keep quiet i won't keep quiet hallelujah because christmas is the time people finish from church and they move around and all kinds of things some of you when you were not born again you know the things you do december and you have a group now you are born again but you are afraid of telling them so as a lady you get they say chick are you dead now you don't come oh yeah those guys are radio they came in from abuja tell them you are the light of the world why do i want to fall my hand it's better to fold your hand than to fold your destiny revelation of christmas hallelujah it's amazing how people can just shift away the things of god one time my father was having his birthday and they went somewhere and had a, a wonderful time a, a, like a buffet and had a nice time and then my father asked someone to pray and some women were offended they said which kind of nonsense is this Abba, there is church there are some of you that your friends say that Abi. don't spiritualize this thing pastor let's enjoy ourselves now don't spoil this atmosphere because I did a teaching on the law of atmosphere the guy wants to sleep with this girl and your words are polishing the flesh in him and he cannot he cannot perform what it is that they want to do as a believer you must threaten darkness with your presence are you learning something please if all the parties and everywhere around are bad gather your friends who you know love god come together cook rice enjoy there's frank edwards song it's better than yanni's song spiritually Many of you don't like what I'm saying. But let me tell you the truth. This is the cost of being a genuine Christian. Hallelujah. You go back and meet a lot of friends. And you say, me, I won't drink, but I'll contribute to buy the beer. The Bible says, blessed is the man. It didn't call the man a wicked man. Who does not walk in the way of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits. So there is walking standing sitting the bible says any one of them you belong you are still you are still found wanting don't walk don't stand don't sit say me i just went to visit i'm watching all kinds of things get out of there hallelujah you watch a guy doing all kinds of things with a lady in the name of love and they have no respect they are at the beach doing all kinds of ungodly things you are sitting there before you know it the bible says lord settled near sodom he didn't enter sodom when abraham told him choose a land lord this is sodom this is lord where did abraham go and find lord how did he start moving you see let me tell you something lord settled near sodom later he was in the middle of sodom and the people even wanted to sleep with the angel you, you see that's that's the state of depravity that's the absence of the ministry of the holy spirit in a man's life don't allow yourself to be a victim of this thing because you see let me tell you something with people in the world people in the world are so bold are doing things that are evil a guy can walk up to you and say i want to sleep with you and you are like jesus christ 
is so you are in an environment that has been so christianized the holy ghost has given us a sense of order and decorum you can't even mention some things and now here somebody just talks to you and they say what do you have to say i remember traveling one time and and there was a white man and he was telling me he was so happy and so bold he was telling me the beer he likes he said Kai, he likes this beer. i said which one is my own <laughs> he didn't even say do you drink he said which one is my own and you can trust that i made god proud in that meeting although we didn't talk again see don't use everything as an opportunity don't just say me i don't like it that's not the gospel you have not preached use the opportunity and say i belong to a kingdom and there is a modus of in our kingdom we live by kingdom values don't waste opportunities they may mock you but let me tell you the truth is only if you have not seen the light of god's word 10 years to come that same person will come for your meeting and be sitting in the overflow because he didn't listen to what you are saying so christmas reminds us of jesus christ as our soon coming king say after me soon coming king it's my pleasure to announce to you one more time after a long time of silence in the church that jesus is still coming soon say it, jesus is coming soon say he's still coming soon in the midst of the noisy messages that try to explain away the coming of jesus let me tell you the truth scripture cannot be broken you must live with eternity in view the bible says if our hope is just in this life we are of all men most miserable now we're not the kind of christians that just believe oh there shouldn't be anything i mean don't don't enjoy yourself don't enjoy the blessings of god no not at all not at all we had picnics this year we had all kinds of things create the christian version of whatever you want i belong to a group in secondary school and one of the group was a rap group that contained most of the bad boys in the school and all the bad and worldly songs we gathered them just remove the parts that are too nasty and just put in something they were just looking for an opportunity to do break dance on stage i was part of the group i didn't sing but i played keyboard for them if you want a party create a party that starts with sound prayer not in jesus name amen we don't want to offend anybody look mr man if you are praying pray you better pray all those things that you guys say we don't want to offend anybody when are you going to be proud of the lord what is your concept of jesus christ see let me tell you the truth there are some things that can never happen around me i don't say it to brag this is not ministry if you buy a new car you don't wrap tampoline on it and drive it and say i don't want anybody to see it's your beauty that people see it so why are you afraid of the light he said you cannot light a candle and put it under a bush many of us love god so long as we are shielded by a nice christian environment called koinonia you are okay you are fine but when you step in and see all kinds of people listen let me tell you be bold be bold be bold if it means you separating from your company of your association of primary school students you always celebrate december 26 boxing day ah you just be knocking bottles repent genuinely and take the message of salvation to them jesus is a soon coming king two scriptures very quickly don't get entangled with this world and its vanities we respond to this revelation by having at least some time of retreat please look up don't spend all the break in festivities even if it's one day have some time alone and reflect are you listening to me this is how we are training you not just to be spiritual men here but to be leaders hallelujah you must take a day even if it's the last one or two days of january 
tell your friends you are not visiting you are not doing anything lock yourself with god and allow his light re-examine you how many of you know what is called a retreat because some of you don't know it you don't do it let me see your hands don't say abba who doesn't know just lift your hands if you know if you don't know it put it down those of you who don't have retreats from today begin to periodically practice retreats retreat means retreat from the word retreat means go back draw back to a solitary place a secret place flog it out with destiny hallelujah where you deal with certain areas where have i been rebellious to the laws of god where have i been rebellious to the things of the spirit hallelujah is someone getting blessed please you must take at least a day off to take some time and then prepare for the year and say lord in the name of jesus 2013 will be a great year i will obey you like never before i will walk in your ways like never before i will see victories in my life like never before the word of god will come strong and alive in my spirit like never before two scriptures acts 1 verse 11 we're almost done acts 1 11 this was jesus speaking who also said ye men okay the angels now when jesus had gone up the angels speaking who also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heavens let's read the remaining together one to read this same jesus who is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven to so say after me jesus is coming back yes he is revelations 3 verse 11 i feel god is cleaning some hearts in this place this night behold i come quickly hold fast hold that fast which thou hast that no man take your crown hallelujah he said hold fast what you have so as you celebrate christmas in the merriment as you eat the turkey as you eat the chicken as you travel around as you have fun as families meet together do not forget these three things the significance of christmas one that is about jesus christ as the light of the world and as a result you should reflect that light in your life you can carry some koinonia messages and just go and distribute it to your friends who probably would not listen to you it can be a seed you are sowing as the light you can buy a few books and bless certain people with it as a gift number two jesus as the expression of the father's love for mankind and you must take that message of god's love in your life and as you speak it do good to people don't gather everything for yourself in the christmas find a way of blessing someone even if it's the little children that are in your community they always stand and when you are going to go an empty trash can you see them coming to pick certain things and they're eating and you are smiling why don't you surprise them and do something why don't you buy one mudu of rice and say i'll surprise these children hallelujah and put everything in in uh, pack away take away a uh, can and call the children and tell them this is an expression of the love of jesus for you they may be laughing it may just cost you a thousand naira to do it but i tell you you have you are, see celebrate christmas in a way that will make heaven clap for you hallelujah you can send a post online from your facebook page and just say jesus is lord share with people what he has done in your life and let them know he can do the same thing you can send a message of hope to people i used to write letters and send to my friends I, I, when i say letters i mean epistles not how are you how was today what did you know no send things beautiful epistles and I will, i'll stamp them and and i mean I'll, I'll, I'll clip them and send it to my friends many of you may need to give hope to someone a lady who probably thinks all is out she has been involved in everything you can think about 
Jesus as the expression of the Father's love. Everybody is laughing at hand, doing everything. You may be that hand that can reach out and say, at Christmas. That's why I thank God for people like the Salvation Army. We don't have those kinds of organizations in Nigeria because most people are, are, are greedy and self-centered people. How many of you will do something to bring glory to the name of the Lord? See, take responsibility as a Christian. Let this be, maybe for some of you, your first Christmas that you didn't just receive a loan, but you gave. Many of you already say, ah, Christmas, my father's workplace, they will bring cow, they will bring palm oil, they will bring rice. Thailand, when are you going to do something for somebody else? Even if it is to call little children around, buy some toys, let them play, let them jump on your bed, let them do everything. And let them know that Jesus reigns. If you can celebrate Christmas that way, let me tell you, you will have a fruitful Christmas. And it's a very prophetic way for preparing for the year ahead. How many of you believe this? Significance of Christmas. So let this be a Christmas that you will celebrate with revelation. Not just one that you just eat and have merriment. There are many people who say, well, this Christmas, let, let, next, let next year come. why won't you make your christmas kingdom driven and meaningful many of you may be the first of different people to gather your family together maybe 31st of december maybe 1st of january just go and meet your father and your mother just gather them together and say let's just pray and speak into the family the father say i'm busy you say no daddy there is a principle of speaking into her. The truth is, God has given many of you honor before your loved ones. You have not taken certain bold steps. Many of you, your parents have come to respect you because they have seen the light of God. And you know if you initiate a move like this, it will work. Save your family from catastrophe. Don't say, I know our father. If you gather everybody now, they'll start saying the wrong things they did from January. Can't you just absorb whatever it is and receive it and communicate what God has? Do something for Jesus. Do something for Jesus. One of the ministries that I admire their passion towards the things of the kingdom is Christ's embassy. They have such an unparalleled zeal. They go all out. Hallelujah. And do different things for the kingdom. Don't just celebrate your Christmas for yourself. And you alone. And you and one of your friends. And you are smiling. Mm -mm. Say I will do something for the kingdom. Say I will do something for the kingdom. On your Facebook page. By revealing the love of God to your loved ones. Concentrate on your family many of you you are the evangelist that god is sending right now to your family some of you are traveling to the village go and dethrone principalities and powers some of you your the people in your community there's one gathering that they do and there is spare one hour that is wasted take advantage of that one hour tell them you have something to do even if it's a special number just say i have something and trust god for it Say, but God, will you move? Will people be blessed? Don't go and disgrace me. No, no. I'm telling you, stand and speak with authority and you will see the grace and the hand of God. Say, I will do it. Say it after me. I will do it for his majesty. And let me remind you once again, you must take some time to retreat. At least a day. You can wait upon the Lord in a fast you may just take fruits say fruits christmas or you can eat whatever you want to eat just wait have some time and say lord i've been living my life without direction or i just got born again will you order my steps into 2013 order my steps i don't just want to wait for many of you in your churches and ministry cross overnight and hear the prophetic word that your different men of god will bring but Lord, I want to get something for myself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
by the grace of God, 31st will send a prophetic word for the year. Now, let me tell you something. I've had people criticize prophetic words and they are worth being criticized if the man of God was just crossing his legs and searched through the net what the Holy Ghost is saying and just saw something. The year of vision. He just said, now, thus said the Lord, is the year of vision or is the year of double promotion or whatever it is. But where people stay with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says without vision, the people cast off restraint. Prophetic word is very useful because although God exists in eternity, at every season, he governs people with a prophetic blueprint of what he is doing. Praise God. Now, I know it has been abused. Many men of God are under pressure. They now call their mentors or their fathers or their herbalists or their whatever and say, what do you think is going to happen? They say, just say it's a year of uh, uh, lifting, lifting. They just write, produce banners, lifting, produce this, lifting, or, pro or that. But that when, when the word is heard and believed, I'm telling you, if you tap into it, you will see that dimension of God. Prophetic word for many ministries is what God will do for them. For us, it's not just what God will do for us. It's what God is doing. Are you listening to me? It's not just what we will receive from God, but how we are going to align the emphasis and the focus of the Spirit for that season. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we'll send words. When you get it, pray on it. Believe it and begin to run with it. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands and worship Him. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you. Thank you, my Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord, for your favor. Thank you, Jesus. going to pray and speak over your life hallelujah but I want us to pray in one minute and say Lord make me useful to my environment during this Christmas that I'll celebrate this Christmas with revelation lift your voice and pray make sure you are praying say Lord I have failed myself to be a tool be it through outreaches through tracts evangelical materials as I celebrate oh God I will have testimonies for my family I will celebrate Christmas like unbelievers I reflect on Jesus being the light of the world an expression of the love of, of the Father and as the soon coming King pray and say Lord I avail myself I receive grace to say no to anything that is ungodly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know that 2013 is a great year. Honestly, I know for many of you, God has begun to speak certain things a very strange and a unique year hallelujah so i want you to believe in what god is doing your best is yet to come believe me i'm telling you this is a year this year has been a preparatory year 
for certain awesome levels of glory that we'll see how many of you believe that hallelujah you're going to pray and say lord if i saw january till now my eyes will witness 2013 lift your voice and pray lord i'm not burying any loved one in my family and i will not die pray because there's wickedness on the road on the streets say lord i'm separated from the arrows that fly by day the noise so pestilence pray and say lord i am safe on the road safe on the air safe in the morning safe in the afternoon no accident no armed robbery pray no bomb blasts i am protected by the mighty hands of god I am protected. I have no covenant with death. I choose life. Please take this prayer point seriously. I choose life. My eyes will see 2013 and I will rejoice with the living. I choose life for myself and my loved ones. I choose life. are going to be traveling on the road i choose life we are separated from robbers i refuse to share because i've been given dominion and authority over the works of god's hands declare it hallelujah hallelujah many of you may be wondering and say ah, why are we speaking let me tell you something about speaking one scripture don't don't turn there because of time job 13 verse 19 listen job said who is he that will plead with me for now if i hold my tongue i shall die that's what job said job said if i hold my tongue i shall die Job 13 verse 19 Who is he that will plead with me For now if I hold my tongue I shall die We don't just talk Irrationally We are speaking out of revelation Hallelujah Praise the Lord You are going to speak And say Lord I left Zaria To my destination healthy it's not in an ambulance that will bring me back into 2013. Lift your voice and pray. No sickness. No accident. Pray for your children. Pray for your family members. Some of them are coming. Some of you are going to the village. You know the wickedness that prevails in your villages. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm above every curse. No death. No sickness, nothing broken, nothing missing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, you're going to say, Lord, listen. There are some of you that God has vowed to bless you and take you into certain realms between now and 31st you're going to say lord i count you faithful and i contend there's no prophecy that was made for 2012 are you listening to me that will enter and be aborted into 2013 you're going to pray there are certain things god has told you he will do with your family certain blessings and breakthrough lift your voice and say even now oh god you are faithful even now oh god lift your voice even now oh god for your family members pray god has vowed to promote them god has vowed to increase them god has vowed to terminate barrenness 
God told you before the end of your, the year, your sister will find her husband. Your brother will find his wife. Some of your family members will get jobs. It has not happened, but God created the heavens and the earth in seven days. Say, Lord, even now, even now, go ahead and pray. Many of you are building and there's just a little push and God told you you would dedicate the house in 2012. Say Lord even now, even now I believe there are certain realms in the spirit God told you you were working, certain financial realms certain realms in wisdom say Lord even now blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance say Lord I may not see the wind I may not see rain but I know the valley shall be filled Lord we believe you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Part of the ministry of the priests in ancient time was to speak prophetic blessings over the people. Many of you do not know the power of prophecy and the power of releasing a word on people. Many people trivialize it. I tell you, believe it. When Jacob blessed, when Isaac blessed Jacob, he didn't give him money. He didn't give him anything. He left a prophetic word that provoked the heavens to shake on his behalf. Hallelujah. I believe that we are anointed and called of God. And I believe that if you will believe, you will carry a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please lift your hands. Thank you Jesus I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus that you will experience unusual doors of favor in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that every reproach over your life and over your family is rolled forever in the name of Jesus I pray for you that any sickness, any disease and infirmity in your body that has defied anything, I curse it to its root in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that whatever causes God to take a man from nothing and make him something, I pray that the God of Israel the one who has taken ordinary men may God lift you in, in a matter of days and exalt you I speak over your family in the name that is above all names whatever it is that has made them cry the God of Israel the God that can do what no man can do may God wipe the tears of your family members permanently in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you in the name of Jesus that these hands that are lifted I anoint you to do wonders yeah. wonders yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus yeah. I command that you have a mouth and a wisdom that no enemy will be able to resist nor can say I command that your presence threatens darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus I call you the blessed I call you the blessed I call you the blessed above every cause above every ancestral statement I deliver you from the scourging tongues of men in the name of Jesus they will not prevail against you in the name of Jesus I take the hands of death above your life in the name of Jesus Christ you are favored you are blessed you are lifted you are distinguished in the name of jesus the ornament of glory comes upon you and isaac bless
blessed Jacob and said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed let a fragrance of honor come upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus and David said is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and although Mephibosheth was a crippled man favor brought him I pray in the name of Jesus that within these two weeks you will enter fearful realms and dimensions of favor my God do it for you my God do it for you in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray for fearful financial blessings in the name that is above all names I speak and I program your spirit man I command enter 2013 with a dimension of prosperity you cannot explain I tell you if you believe it you will see it I tell you if you believe it you will see it I call strangers to bless you I provoke strangers let them call your parents I provoke it from the west from the east I provoke it I provoke it strangers unusual wealth and prosperity I invoke it according to the measure of grace hallelujah whatever has been a source of division and fighting and quarreling in your family many of you get home only to fight in the name that is above all names kapata kabalada i speak over you an end comes to the division in your family i don't care why it came an end comes an end comes and every strange woman who will not let your father concentrate in his family or every strange man who will not let your sisters and brothers i break that relationship from the realm of the spirit i break it from the realm of the spirit i break it from the realm of the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah all the people that come and distract your parents so that they won't bless you you are praying you are walking other people are coming all in the name of uncles people from the village may my god give your parents wisdom may god give them wisdom may god give them wisdom i pray for fathers right now because fathers are a real problem to many people in the family i pray who says he cannot change the heart of a king is in the hands of the lord and like the waves of the sea he will turn it change i prophesy upon the stony heart of your fathers change in the name of jesus they will love your mother they will love you may god expose those who have given bad reports may god expose the hands of wicked people all those who come to intrude with the welfare and the progress of your family i command that god will expose them forever yeah. hallelujah hallelujah i pray there are some of your families every year by this time you will go to the village and your parents renew all kinds of godless ordinances that keep granting satan access to your family i pray in the name of jesus in the name that is above all names that you are going as an agent of change we release you as an agent of change we release you as an agent of change for those of you who don't have the grace to say no to sin no to immorality no to every kind of wickedness that happened during festive seasons let an anointing come upon you to say no in the name of jesus let an anointing come upon you to say no in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah may the lord bring a blessing in your family that will be too big to it will reconcile every division no matter what the issue is may god bring a blessing that will bring everybody together every plan of the enemy over your life that satan has vowed that you will not smile during this christmas i command 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that this will be the greatest Christmas celebration you have had in your life in the mighty name of Jesus one of the things the Lord told me is that many people are going to carry favor I, I've said this thing every time I say it many people don't believe it favor this favor thing many of you are yet to explore what the favor of God is the favor of God the favor of God once again I speak it into your life I speak favor into your life may God give you favor may God give you favor may God give you favor let it rub off on you may God give you favor let it speak everywhere you go men who don't like you will still bless you men who don't like you will still bless you they will know what has come upon them they will bless you they will bless you I prophesy it I prophesy it I send this word to your atmosphere I create a prophetic atmosphere for this word to thrive it will not return until you have a testimony in the name of Jesus we pray for the families that have your if you have any of your loved ones sick lift your hands enough is enough enough is enough for God's sake any one of your loved ones sick in the name that is above all names we pray right now that the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead let that power invade your house in the name of Jesus barrenness because forever barrenness because forever barrenness because forever barrenness because forever in the name of Jesus every terminal disease let it be caused to its root in the name of Jesus all those who are bedridden I command that at your sight and at your presence they will jump up from that bed I tell you you will testify they will jump up from that bed we cause cancer we cause high blood pressure we cause HIV we cause blindness partial paralysis if it has a name let it bow in the name of Jesus and I speak over the house I speak to the ground if I be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ I speak to this ground I command the Bible says out of the earth comes bread I speak to this ground in the name of Jesus let it provoke a blessing to your life Job said in six things will you be delivered yea in seven things he said in a time of famine you will laugh he said you shall be delivered from the scourging tongues he said because you have made a covenant with the stones if your eyes can see sand no one will kill you in that place except there is no sand on the floor if your eyes can see sand I declare no man will take your life the Lord deliver you in the day of trouble may the Lord answer for you may his word speak for you in the name of Jesus anyone stranger roaming around your house that is involved in occultic activities before you get home we drive them out of your house out of your house out of your house out of your house in the name of Jesus we command salvation for your loved ones impossible salvations let them happen in the name of Jesus take an unusual unction of the spirit take an unusual anointing take it home do wonders I tell you heal the sick cast out devil raise the dead don't sympathize no change stories don't sympathize with your loved ones hallelujah hallelujah 
2013 is going to be a very powerful year believe me a very powerful year i pray in the name of jesus every miracle every manifestation of the spirit you have seen here in the lives of the ministers i declare go and reproduce it wherever you go go and reproduce the prophetic go and reproduce the apostolic go and reproduce the evangelistic go and reproduce pastoral grace go and reproduce the teaching grace in the name of the lord jesus if you ever saw one minister of the gospel here whatever you saw go and do it whatever you saw i release it from the powers of the spirit whatever you saw on stage if you saw miracles go and produce it if you saw quality delivery go and reproduce it if you saw word of knowledge go and reproduce it hallelujah praise the lord i pray for the house that the lord will bless and increase us together next year in the name of jesus that the lord will bless and increase us next year by the power of the holy ghost you will come back and everyone will know that god is with you the worship team sang about emmanuel god being with us truly god is with us have no fear cheer up enjoy your xmas remember you are a king don't forget your identity you are royalty you are above all you are not contending no you are above all that's your present position hallelujah very quickly before we take the announcements i want you to walk up to 20 people and hug them and say congratulations for seeing the final service of 2020 very quickly congratulations make sure you are congratulating someone faithful god come on with a smile on your face even if you are coming here for the first time blessed are you blessed are you yes blessed are you Now give Jesus a big shout, big shout, big shout, a victorious shout, a victorious shout. Come on, I thought you'd be jumping for Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus. Three days ago, a friend of mine called me early in the morning and um, she said, Josh, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong? And she said, I had a dream and I got a song from that dream and I want to share it with you. I said, really? And she said, it was a dream. I was ministering somewhere and she was not even in the ground where the meeting was. And she heard the song. It was a powerful song from the Spirit. And she heard my voice. I was singing it. And... Um, it was so powerful according to her description she said the place was so charged there were all kinds of miracles people repenting opening up their hearts to the lord and um, when she woke up she came with a song and i want to teach us the song very powerful it's our culture to receive heavenly songs and communicate them hallelujah because we are a family hallelujah so we're going to sing the song I like you to receive it in your spirit many of you just like new songs thank god for the next one no 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 no. you see god gives songs to announce seasons hallelujah jewish songs were used to announce seasons so when you heard a jew sing it will give you an understanding of the seasons that they were in if it was a passover they had songs if it was the day of atonement called yom kippur they had songs that they would sing and so I believe that this song came prophetically, coinciding with the great things that God is doing in this season. Hallelujah. Very powerful song. 
The song is a revelation of uh, Matthew 21, the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just listen and let it bless your heart. Are you ready, people? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. There's a part that says Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Worship us, can you help me? Holy. Oh, holy. Just listen to the song and let it enter your spirit. Unedited, we didn't change it exactly as it came from the realm of the spirit. In the name of our God. Sing holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Can we try it now? The whole congregation, holy. Can you sing it? Holy, holy, holy. blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Let's just help the worshippers sing holy. Just the worshippers. Help me worship us. Holy, holy, blessed is he. It was a triumphant entry. In the name of our God. And he rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song comes the season God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant riding upon a horse and that's why we are joining him to sing Hosanna, we are saying Hosanna Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name blessed is he who comes in the name of one more time Hosanna, Hosanna can we rise up on our feet to just sing it one more time? Holy, holy now. Come on, let's raise up our voices and sing. Holy, 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 holy. Let's see who comes 
understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit unedited to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. In one minute, just say, Lord, I receive. I connect my spirit with the revelation of this song. A triumphant entry into our destinies, into the new levels of grace, new levels of his spirit. Oh, let it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we hear your voice and we yield our spirits. Like Samuel before the ark, we declare, speak for we are listening. We have ears to hear that which you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. When you make God's ways your way, he will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. So that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. That it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Until you understand the operation of the heavens, you have no right to do anything on the earth. And it's our job here at Koinonia to listen. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon the watch, my watch, and set myself upon the tower. And I will see what the Lord will say. The Bible says, what I show you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop and it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the father to hear what he's communicating for every season god is preparing us training us fashioning us by his spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season and hear me friends if you found your way into this place i'd like you to know that god brought you by his spirit to build to equip to empower you he said rule thou in the midst of thy enemies it takes understanding he said he made many lights but he made two great lights one light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night if you don't have that light you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night there is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule and god is communicating these lights and these truths unto us and father we thank you it's a privilege and we respect it we don't just believe in you we respect you thank you father in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated we began a series last week on the kingdom hallelujah how many of us were blessed last week praise God we began to establish please take out your pen your writing materials is a teaching so as much as possible whenever you're coming for a meeting like this come with your writing materials god is teaching and building us there's only so much your mind can at a time blessed be the name of the lord so i began a teaching last week and i began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom how that the word kingdom comes from two words it means the domain of the king hallelujah how many of us still remember that 
and we began to explain how that in the system of god the kingdom of god is everywhere the influence and the, the authority the rulership the dominion of the king is exercised is permitted to find expression hallelujah and we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland how many of you remember that we began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom and that every time a colony is created it is created either by conquest you fight and gain access to that colony or you find a virgin land and occupy it hallelujah the a colony is is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom and i did tell us that in a kingdom system everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king hallelujah in a democracy we have people living for themselves for instance in america you can decide to walk up naked i can decide to walk naked tomorrow and when people say josh are you okay i said what is your business we are in a democracy but in a kingdom system everyone lives for the king hallelujah if at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king you were termed a rebel hallelujah and i began to explain to us that we are not just believers we are not just born again christians but we are citizens of a kingdom hallelujah and that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance not just to our savior not just to our lord but to our king many know him as savior many know him as lord but few know him as king and daniel speaking said that his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and isaiah reiterating said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end and god is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom because for many people christianity is just a blind race a race out of hell to heaven and we stop there and there are many believers who are not partnering with the holy spirit and every time you see our posters when we write koinonia we write intimacy and partnership that we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him hallelujah praise the lord and then we began to explain how that man was given dominion adam was given a kingdom are you listening to me adam was not given a religion he was given a kingdom genesis 1 26 he said have dominion the word dominion is a language of royalty it says rule and adam lost and gave the keys to satan hallelujah and i did tell us that the entire bible can be summarized thus the king has a kingdom and out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth hallelujah and for a period of time man walked in the council of the kingdom he sent his governor the governor of the kingdom is the spirit of god i told us the concept of the governor that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values the culture the principles of the mother kingdom that's the primary assignment of the governor he's a representative of the king hallelujah and then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land and he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king and there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens every kingdom has systems has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people has a political system every kingdom has a system for rest and and all of these things we are going to be discussing it hallelujah there are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true christian on the earth for many of us we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell or get married and have children and grow old and then say i've contributed my quota to the planet there's more hallelujah say after me i am an ambassador a representative of the kingdom hallelujah and so from genesis chapter 3 until um matthew chapter 1 the coming of jesus he was the kingdom lost you can summarize everything the kingdom was lost hallelujah it was not god's original design for the nation of israel to have kings he desired their king it's out of their strong heart and they were a stiff-necked people hallelujah and so he told samuel to go and anoint saul and then david and all the kings that followed 
it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when Jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of Israel understood the concept of kingdom and then Jesus showed up John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God hallelujah and when Jesus stepped upon the planet he began to speak about the kingdom hallelujah started talking about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like unto this the kingdom of God is like unto this he began to liken the kingdom to many things and all through his work on earth he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom when he showed love it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he walked miracle signs and wonders it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom and then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor in chapter 15 and 16 he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus the comforter the standby the advocate the helper the strengthener the guide the holy spirit hallelujah and i did tell us that jesus for our sake he came to restore the kingdom hear me the primary purpose of jesus was not to come and take us to heaven don't stone me yet it's a teaching hallelujah the primary purpose of jesus was to restore the kingdom to restore the kingdom that's why revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says we have been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and we shall rule in this life in this earth hallelujah and jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lose in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter 1 says i am he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of matthew to john was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter 1 down onto jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that governed the holy spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the bible ends in the book of revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of revelation is a prophetic book that reveals christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to running to heaven we are not staying very long there we are coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it 
the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts god is reorienting us so that we understand that christianity is a kingdom system it's not just a religion like many others are you listening to me many of us think okay it's just a religion and then one day one day something will happen i will die no 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 and to equip us to be relevant revelations 11 verse 15 if you are there say amen and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay I like the rendition in amplified the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom the systems of this world the word world here is the Greek word cosmos the social system of the world he said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open hallelujah I'll be talking on kingdom advancement it's a continuation of the series kingdom advancement advancing the frontiers of the kingdom we stopped last week by helping us understand that Jesus came to restore the kingdom. Say after me, Jesus Christ came to restore the kingdom. And he did restore the kingdom. Say one more time, Jesus Christ came to restore the kingdom. Hallelujah. And not just to restore the kingdom, but to restore the citizens of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why he died. That's why he went through everything he went through. Jesus Christ bled and he cried. He wept. Was beaten by cruel and wicked people. He went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us. Hallelujah. And the next step when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored. The next step is to receive the kingdom. Hallelujah. Say after me the next step is to receive the kingdom. How do you receive the kingdom? By embracing the king of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what we call being born again. Hallelujah. Being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom. So when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again, we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing. We're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why you come up and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. And you say, I declare that you are Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Lord of my life. You are the king. I choose to submit to your governing authority. Thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom. And every time you make that decision. As a proof. He sends the governor of the kingdom into your life. It is such that the governor of the kingdom. Doesn't just live around us and walk with us. But he can live in us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Very, very important. So you receive the kingdom. You embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life. Because hitherto, by reason of the fallen nature, all of us by default submitted 
in Adam to the governing authority of Satan. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom. So it is a kingdom. The kingdom of darkness into another kingdom. He calls it the kingdom of God's dear son. So when you get born again, that's what happens in the realm of the spirit. A translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. And the moment that happens to you, the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life. Hallelujah. As a non-believer, the Holy Spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. John chapter 16 tells us, he said, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will convict you of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. When you now become or enter, listen, let me tell you something, friends, getting born again is not all, it's just the beginning. Are you following me now? There are so many believers who think that all there is to the Christian life or the kingdom life, I love to call it, is just to get born again. And so we get born again. There are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom. They don't know what else to do. And they come and say, okay, so now what am I supposed to do? And we say, well, keep, keep praying fast once in a while. Read your Bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow. And the people cannot understand. After six months, they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is. Hallelujah. And they come and they say, well, I've been born again. I say, who has not been born again? Let's continue being born again. Just remain born again. Hallelujah. But there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again. Hallelujah. Your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom. Say after me, the entrance to the kingdom. It's like when you, you, you get born again, you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the moment you get born again, there are two things you get familiar with. Number one is the constitution of the kingdom, what we call the Bible. The Bible is the constitution of the kingdom, inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king. Hallelujah. Brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom, to give them the mindset of the priorities, the culture, the value, the nature. Hallelujah. In this constitution, you get to understand the character of your king. You get to understand his desire, his project, his agenda. That's what the Bible is all about. The Bible is not just a book for deliverance. It's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character. Hallelujah. So when you begin to study the Bible, you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king. You understand that this is how he operates. We begin to understand that our king is a king of love. That the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love. Are you following me now? We begin to understand these things. And then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor. The one we call the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the when he the spirit of truth is come. It said he will guide you into all truth. He will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom. Communicating unto you the values of the kingdom. Hallelujah. He will first and foremost work on your mindset. Say after me, mindset. When he works upon your mindset, you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom. At first, you will go through a lot of conflict. The Bible makes us to understand in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. It tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom 
that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty and is antagonistic to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. And the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything. He allows your will to come into play. So you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him. And it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom. That's what we call the anointing. The anointing is God's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king. When you get born again, you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom. Are you getting blessed? It's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church. And let me tell you something. Everything you ever have and everything you ever become, if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom, it will kill you. That's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king. Are you following me now? And so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom, the Holy Spirit. And God designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again, your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further we get filled with the holy ghost then you fall under the anointing ba -ba 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 -ba. you just turn and then you get born again and then many people just stop there so what is it about praying in tongues and just moving and then they say just keep praying there's a real devil in this kingdom just keep praying and the person says okay so i'm praying in tongues and he's just praying ba -ba 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 -ba. what is the prayer to what end hallelujah to what end is our bible study to what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah i want you to understand that the king has an agenda say after me the king has an agenda and what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom as i announce this you check your life if you are not directly supporting this agenda you are called a rebel so after this announcement there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king and you are going to hear it very very clearly are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom very simple the king has an agenda what is his agenda the agenda of the king for this season is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values 
of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning i follow me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of God's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda thank you jesus this is the current agenda of the king that we partner with the governor of the king having been taught the values the culture the lifestyle and you see god does god cannot send you the king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message until he schools you are you listening to me you must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when god calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now god is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again it tells you we are in the same kingdom you say no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting that's the nonsense that is going all around god is not teaching us denomination and dogma he's teaching us kingdom are you following me now that the most important thing all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms hallelujah when we understand this we'll stop discriminating ourselves because i wonder what we are going to do in heaven that big table in the last supper there's only one table the bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seat mate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one yoruba person one Igbo person and then one northern and quickly quickly three people let's do that quickly quickly yoruba Igbo. please come come up three of you no 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 hallelujah Aaron is from Kaduna state she's from the east and Ejimi is from the what west now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things are you following me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a Yoruba person especially a, a well it, it happens with everybody really but especially the ladies want to greet what happens they prostrate is their culture I follow me so you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you 
where they are coming from is that correct when you hear them talking and they say a share and all of that you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah are you listening to me and then for the ebos they have i we had a sumptuous meal it reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of god that we had on sunday in pastor williams house I appreciate them you don't know what i appreciate them <laughs> hallelujah i ate a very delicious soup called in salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language i follow me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise god and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport and you see somebody just proceed ah are you a she? And then you just greet, you know, you just bow here you know, you know, you know, and all of that. I say, Are you a Yoruba? That's nice. It connects you. Are you following me now? Please, I'm trying to communicate a message. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, as citizens of the kingdom, we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly. Are you listening to me? When you see a Yoruba person, you know instantly. When you see an Igbo person, even if a Yoruba person wears kaftan, his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing very quickly you just know this a yoruba person hallelujah are you following me now how come there are many christians and there are few kingdom citizens it tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have we have many believers across many churches and many christians but the world is still contending whether jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask i say who are you christian who are you christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me that's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah their dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were jews god bless you please sit down hallelujah so our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture now the word culture is not a demonic word i know that um in a nigerian and african context i know that there are many wrong things with many cultures all right there are very healthy sides of culture respect love for god but there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of god has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement So you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character 
you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control he said against this there is no law and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a loved one and instead of you to be insulting god and talking say lord i love you i love you now and they cannot understand i love you tomorrow i love you forever you just hear a bad report from the doctor and instead of panicking you say no there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that i see only comes alive every time i hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in jesus christ the moment jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love and they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time i hear number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system hallelujah the social system satan being the god of this world the bible calls him in ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 the prince of the power of the air the spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience that's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom disobedience and rebellion hallelujah in the world system they hail you for disobeying hallelujah as guys when you disobey people disobey parents disobey authority they say man and you're like hey you just touch your head because it's a system are you following me now it's called cosmos let me tell you where it started from it started from a man in the bible called cain the bible says and cain departed from the presence of god he came out from under the governing authority of that king and the bible says cain built a city a type of a kingdom after the name of his son enoch and all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system and then nimrod in genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name 
for ourselves. And right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. I'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence. Thank you Jesus for your word. The entrance of your word gives light. Understanding to the simple. So the anointing because Satan is alive. There's sickness everywhere. Oppression everywhere. Hallelujah. And in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus came he began to speak and he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He found where it was written in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 61. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed. He has smeared me with the Holy Ghost and with power. He has empowered me to do the following. To preach the glad tidings to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To set the captives free. So the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and you say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed many of you who have gone on our facebook i'm sure you've you've seen the great testimony that we have the latest really that we have right now very powerful testimony hallelujah about two or three um fridays ago a woman not even a believer hallelujah came and she stood outside here had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and said what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of God or to make a name for the ministry. All this nonsense that people do. That's why a true servant of God will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom. Are you seeing that? So if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you, then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel. And we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesus's for many people but every true servant of god is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them zeus and hammers the bible says paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people john speaking said that i may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of god any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get god's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people 
Let us know that these people are cutting corners, but that's not true. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 17a says, Cry, yet saying, Thus saith the Lord, My cities through prosperity shall be spread abroad. That's in your Bible. Cry, yet saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities through prosperity. So prosperity is a weapon. Listen, many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy. Many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor. That's nonsense. Are you listening to me? Hear me. When you understand the agenda of the king, you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor. Hallelujah. For many of us, our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg. The Bible calls such people rich fools. The issue is not the rich. The issue is that the person is a fool. Why a fool? Because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity. The Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. There are many people being destroyed by their prosperity. Building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence. He said, woe unto he that puts his strength in a man. Hallelujah. When you want to organize a crusade, We've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them so it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to bail because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say don't bow and they say so what do i do he say i don't know but sha don't bow and the man is saying i must pay the school fees of my children the bible says any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel and we say don't be corrupt don't loot they say okay teach me god's way we say forget it don't loot and when the man is under pressure he will sign that document when the lady is under pressure she will sign and say to hell with anything and then we keep looking and say the ladies are corrupt the young people are poor the bible says the poor the rich it didn't say the rich christ the rich will rule over the poor Are you listening to me so you better undo this poisonous mindset that satan has put in believers as long as we remain in poverty there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government preaching lies and prophesying lies seeking favor nonsense because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom for many people the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the holy spirit and it's what they want that is being done what are we saying hallelujah 
and so because i gave a seed of 30 million naira, i come and tell the pastor there are some people that hate me preach on hatred the pastor says yes lord <laughs> and he comes on stage he said i was sleeping by 5 a.m and the lord told me son stand up i have a word for you and i had hatred in my spirit shout hatred can i tell you something friends i have said it people have termed it to be arrogant i'm sorry if you think it's arrogance let me tell you something the wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man it's tied to the direct hand of god that's why we preach the way we preach without apology we bring the uncompromising word of truth because i tell you under god we have not bowed to bear and we will not bow there is a way you eat the king's food and you cannot talk against the king you can't eat the king's food and talk against the king but we are that remnant that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system that's why we are teaching what we are teaching so prosperity is very important number four say language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected is called influence I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweetheart, come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody. I mean clap and shout. Look at them. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at what is happening to her. <laughs> She's happy and enjoying it. Although she cannot understand. This same character or this same attribute is inherent in every one of us, including the religious people. I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him. <laughs> we all desire influence for parents when they call your child. And the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating. Come on, am I talking? Help me. How much more the king that you represent? The Bible says the hour has come. John 17 verse 1. He said now the hour has come. He said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. That's how God gets glory. When the sons are glorified. Glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. Are you listening to me? To reveal his glory and his majesty is found in Psalms 1 45 and the Hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if Michael Jackson just lift his hand and say I get I'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church was supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when cecilia ibu was having a thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love god like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and I or Richard Jaffo preached his life out. He said, now that I have this caliber of people, let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them. Let me tell you something. There are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you 
is your influence the bible says see it that way man diligent in his business he said he will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings i was watching the forbes forbes um first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you do you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible say for god so love the world that you are hating <laughs> hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages 8 to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset. mindset the world is a system that gives you a mindset i follow me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade but there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom number one sports sports is an area where the power of babel is being built hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of christ hallelujah sports number two in the area of arts music fashion this is an area that the church has neglected you just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night and those people have paid their price they are competent so we say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized 
they are excellent and they directly promote Satan. But how about it? Mediocrity is the most important thing. The voice doesn't matter. It's just the revelation. I say, who? And the keyboardist for 10 minutes is trying to find the key punching. And then he's smiling. You don't provoke yourself. The Bible says, buy the truth. That's what I say. You are called into fashion. Who do you know in fashion? Let me, I don't know anybody. Oh, okay. One person, Versace. These are the systems you want to conquer. And you do not even know them. Those in the world, the sports people, the media people, those at the forefront of music and fashion, day and night they are building themselves. They sign contracts with Satan and they keep investing in themselves. You ask them, where are you going? They keep innovating things because they live for the glory of Satan. But we have many believers who cross our legs and we think God will do everything. And you say, I know one day the top is my portion. You really think so? The top is your portion. How? We don't invest in ourselves. We just come and mumble tongues for one hour. And then we say my destiny. And then you go to a place and they send you out. They say no job for you and you are angry. Why will I give you a job when you are not competent? Why should I give you a job when you will make my company lose? Are you, are you, am I provoking somebody? Let me tell you. Whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head. There are certain things that only competence in partnership with the Holy Spirit will give you. Believe what I'm saying. I pray in tongues. But we are the Nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword. But with another hand we keep beauty. So many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life. You say, I want to be a writer. You don't know any writer. You don't read anything about writers. You don't have any article about a writer. And he say, one day I'll be at the top. Every time you see an unbelieving writer, he say, one day I'll challenge you. You really think so? Am I provoking somebody? Number three, politics and government. It's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom. Many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians. And then we say, hey, it's happening in Nigeria. It's happening. Where the, it wasn't enacted by angels. It was enacted by human beings. You can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom, not religion, men who understand the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Another area, business. In the area of business. There are many church folks who've left the business to the people who say, ah, business. Business is such an ugly thing. It's a corrupt thing. Forget Jare. Swindle you. You see, believers, there's nobody that does clean business. So forget about their tongues. Can't you be the first? Who will not bow? And they are the ones in control of the finances. And they move people wherever they want. Hallelujah. You can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers. And your director can just look at you say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a, 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 a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the well do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who 
are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come appreciate this beautiful lady wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of <laughs> hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord don't get married don't give birth are you listening to me very important and that's one area satan is perverting the family life like never before people are losing priorities and they look at children and when they say bring this child to church they look, look and say ah, ah little children like this but these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them the parents pass and see the children and say ah okay children say with their little thing then one day the child tells you mommy i've been the queen of the coast since three years the queen of the coast <laughs> queen of what i thought you were young <laughs> hallelujah can i tell you something let me challenge parents here and prospective parents the word train up a child does not mean discuss with them it makes it means make them do it if i'm going to church my child is going to follow me no matter what the argument is we'll talk later <laughs> hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me back bring me back and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah bless this lady i love you god bless you sweetheart hallelujah there are many parents that for your children the first time they hear i love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it and then he comes and says hey, how are you i love you and although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear and then she says, i hate you i hate you and then in the night she flashes him and then he flashes her back then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1 flash again or high then the guy calls yeah, i knew you would call and later on you find out why a nice church going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted because a family where there is no love a family where there is no togetherness a family where the parents are not humble to say i'm sorry when they need to say i'm sorry that kind of a family is not a true picture the first example of god should be seen in a father the first example of the holy spirit should be seen in a mother the first example of unity should be found in the couples hallelujah to train the children in the fear and the admonition of god i have a dream 
that after 20 years of marriage you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing no rat race no fighting up and down i'll forever be chasing after you that's what you hear us singing because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy we are adhering to it are you getting blessed i'm provoking something the last area media right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free it has already been paid satan paid people to prove that jesus is not lord he's still paying people hallelujah you just open any a nice christian site with a little clip five minutes they say pay fifty dollars then say i'm not ready and then somebody say come and see i had an encounter with satan it's free on youtube watch hallelujah are you getting blessed the media it's just right now that there's a media revolution god is raising media giants for some of you as i mentioned this area something in your spirit says are you hearing are you hearing god is telling you are you hearing the moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you sweetheart you just say pastor who told you it's pastor maybe it's media or fashion Many of us just think ministry is about standing and you envision when you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming, they just bring water for you and say, Daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas are the areas that the church have left to the world. And can I tell you something? Our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems that's why we are holding this teaching hallelujah but i know we are that generation that the next set of sports people i look forward to times when before they start playing while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and and scoring goals they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people and you tell them i speak under the authority of the lord whose i am and who i serve that statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and say this is my mentor i'll do anything he's doing and now that he has mentioned jesus what is it about jesus and they begin to search and god will lead them to a site and they will check jesus is lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there and then you read and know let me tell you if we depend on only our 50,000 and 500,000 man crusade to get people born again in the next 100 years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the tv five minutes a woman like oprah winfrey stands on tv and declares to people that jesus is not lord and in five minutes I was checking her Facebook and she has 6 million followers. 6 million followers on Facebook. Hallelujah. Coca-Cola has 23 million. And I checked many churches. 10, 5, 11, 22, 110. 300, 700, and then a few hundred thousand. Those are the mega ministries. So, can you see that Christianity is not a call to laziness. It's a call to service. Are you following me? So, after you get born again and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost trains you and then He sends you. And then He begins to call you. He says, Oh no, I'm releasing you to the IT industry. Go and challenge the people. Steve Jobs, of blessed memory, he has gone wherever he is. Hallelujah and all kinds of people and he says i'm sending you wherever there is darkness god sends you as the light and he says go as the light and he comes and says mr Yums, you draw and you do design i'm sending you to this industry he comes and says aaron you are an events planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system 
this is um, representing the head of department when you say I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense don't stone me if for seven days in a week you are in church all the days of your life you will never affect the system because the mission field is not in the church the mission field is outside the church it said you are the light of the world not the church so we come and we are built we are equipped on monday you are at work in the bank and someone comes and while you are signing the check you see by the spirit and you say sir you've been having a challenge in your family and he looks and then you tell him i bring you the word of the lord i know that you're having a financial problem begin to tithe and be serious tithing is a principle of the kingdom and then you just turn his receipt and write your number or you write a number of a ministry he can go and say god bless you the king has found expression <laughs> hallelujah and then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government to say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw and they knew that christ was the king it wasn't because he was praying in tongues it was because he could translate this thing god sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives and you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people at that point your christianity is meaningful hallelujah and then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors christians or non-christians without discrimination and you put your beautiful garden because you have received god's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of god you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say it to the glory of god when their leader is not a christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you god gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life had been invited many times to the government house to speak for many christians when we invite they invite us to the government house we are just thinking of how we we'll chop and someone who is anointed who loves god suddenly gets to the government house and he's like i beg jerry i'm coming and then you say 
I see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can I do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster Jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be Joshua Selman International Ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven I've made up my mind that everywhere I go the kingdom will find expression Ejimi makes shirts look at the beautiful shirts by the media people this is an artistry and the creativity of one he is a minister but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give God glory hallelujah we believe in it I'm being practical and I'm sharing this dial is going for a, a, a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country hallelujah he's going for a training he's the head of the media but it's not just about praying in tongues we realize that we have an agenda we are going we are invading the media and so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks certified every one of these media people you see them doing what they are doing they were trained because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn a, play, a church is the place of building and any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we are not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom think kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all you say lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you what all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you 
I will give you this if you will just bow. Hear me, friends. We are the generals of God. Are you hearing me? Inside and outside, there is a clarion call from the Spirit. It's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise. The greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building. Keep building. Keep building. With one hand, you study the word and you learn the principles. With another hand, you begin to translate the realities of the spirit. Hallelujah. We're talking with Steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future. He would sit down and pray and God would give him songs and then he would write them. By the time he sings these songs and they are blessing, look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven. One day God will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music, we will release these songs to you and you will raise it. I look forward to times when, when we tune our radio, we'll just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for heal song. Bless God, I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of God. If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested, it's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there and we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. We will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it. But let me tell you, it's in you. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. We are rising. Our parents, like the Eli generation, have done their best. And they are transferring the button to the Samuels. And we will carry it and represent the kingdom a time will come they will come and meet you and someone will want to bribe you and you hold back his hand and not just say no i don't do it you say no i represent a kingdom don't just say i don't do it. someone comes to meet you and says can you come to my hotel I say no i don't do it what you are just trying to say is that uh, i don't do it with you you must let the person know that i represent a kingdom and i'm bounded by a modus operandi and part of it is that we are not engaged in this. I have a king and I pay an allegiance to him. Hallelujah. Ejimi does designs. When you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-God, he will not do it. Because you like him, you will change your mind. I look forward to a time when the world, although they don't like us, they cannot deny the impact we are bringing. That's the time at that time we will gather on sundays and pray and every time we are praying although they do not understand what we are saying they cannot deny the effect is telling on their salaries is telling on the economy you come and meet someone working in your office and like joseph the person is depressed and he said what happened say i was just told i have cancer and he said come with me as the manager of the company say in the name of the lord jesus cancer go and the person is healed and he said i thought it's only in church and he says to let you know that the kingdom of god is advancing hallelujah so arise media giants arise arise it's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down the call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility we're going to pray we're out of time we'll continue the next time i'll be revealing to us the structure of the kingdom I really want us to understand the concept of the kingdom now you see that is beyond just getting born again rise up on your feet your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns
authority to directly promote the government of heaven in your class in your job you have a responsibility of the increase of his government and his peace there shall be no end how much of the king are you representing how much of his glory are you directly representing come on pray pray Hear me, hear me. You're going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, I receive grace to be competent. Hear me. Many of us right now from this meeting go and buy books, go and buy DVDs that address the area you know God has called you. Sit down and walk. There's room for laziness. Generals are not lazy people. Lift up your voice and pray. I will be competent in the media. I will be competent in politics. Go ahead and pray. It's an apostolic reformation. And also for nominal Christianity. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. I will pay the price. No matter what it is possible. Come on, pray. I pay the price to be competent. To be competent. He pays the influence of the kingdom. Inside and outside. Make sure you are praying. That's why you came for Koinonia tonight. To be equipped. To be empowered. Come on, pray. And say, Lord, you are sending me to the media. I will be competent. You are sending me to politics and government. I will be competent. You are sending me to the family ministry. I will be competent. You are sending me to fashion and style. Make sure you are praying. Whether you are a caterer, whether you are an event planner, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a banker, whether you are a politician, we all have the same mandate, the same responsibility. Whether you are a teacher, whether you are a student, advance his kingdom, advance his kingdom, advance his government. His kingdom, his influence is an everlasting kingdom. Make sure you're praying. Make in ministry, I receive grace to be competent. In business, I receive grace to be competent. In every area you have called me, I receive grace to be competent for the sake of His majesty, for the sake of the kingdom. My generation will hear my voice. My confidence will give me a voice. And I will shout it. Everything. With everything. We will shout for your glory. With your catering, with your banking, as a lecturer, as a computer mogul, as a business mogul, as an investment tycoon, as a pastor, with everything, we have one agenda, advance the country. 
voice of his kingdom. Make sure you are singing this song as a prophetic revelation. Confidence in God. Confidence in God. Confidence in the plan. As an architect. Confidence. As an engineer. Jesus died for. This is what Jesus died for. We not just win souls, but we advance their kingdom. So when you get people born again, don't leave them there. That's why God prepares Koinonia as a platform to equip people. Changing our minds. There's no room for disobedience. There's no room for rebellion. We may be young people, but we are not lawless. We have a king above us. And we are going somewhere that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. That the media of this world will become the media of our God. That the politics of this world will become the politics of our God. Hear me? And that's why you came here tonight. For as many who are connecting on the internet and many others who will hear this tape and this, the DVDs, there is a clarion call. It's beyond church. It's beyond ENI. It's beyond koinonia. It's a, an apostolic reformation God is bringing upon the nations. Lord, we give you praise. We are out of time. You are worshipping with us for the first time. I'd like you to leave your seat and quickly come. Please, we're out of time. Let's hurry up. In this atmosphere, leave your seat inside and outside. Appreciate them. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Inside and outside. Young and old. If this is your first time, appreciate them. Come on, give them a big coin on your God bless you. Clap for them like kingdom citizens. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the king. You see one of our there fathers and our mothers. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. They are coming. Keep singing. They are coming. Yes, Lord. Just move yes, forward. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is no other. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes,
Thank you very much for coming. Daddy, we especially want to thank you, sir.